Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on mysterious and weird true stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case file number 376, written by Beta Brains. To save my dog, something manipulated time. I'll start with this. My dog is fine. I've had a lot of glitches in my life, but this is one of the only ones that had multiple witnesses. I have a smallish dog that gets out of the yard constantly because he's a fox terrier and can dig out of anything. So last summer he gets out and I hear him barking at our neighbors. I go on the porch and he's across the street barking at the grumpy old lady in a house coat and she's rolling her eyes at me and I'm embarrassed. So I whistle for my dog and he does the super boost run he always does when he's being sneaky and starts darting across the street. I have this moment, kind of like one of those school math questions when I hear a car show up in my periphery and look at my dog, then the car, then my dog. Then my brain is like the math meme lady, so I start yelling at him to stay and running towards him, but I just knew he was about to get hit. Almost like a weird precognition moment, because I for sure don't know math. It felt like time actually stopped moving. Seriously, like the X-Men scenes with Quicksilver. And just as I see he's about to collide with the car, I scream. I'm not a screamer. But the scream that came out could have stopped time, it was like a weird sonic boom that made my vision fuzzy. And I see his torso completely run over by the front tire. And then there's this kind of fuzz and almost a click, where the same split second happens again but the car barely grazes him and he keeps running right into the yard. Time gets a little fuzzy because I'm losing my mind. But I open the back door and he comes in perfectly fine minus a small scratch on his eye. I run back out front and the driver and his wife, who is hysterical, are still in the middle of the street and the housecoat lady's jaw is on the ground and all four of us are looking at each other like what the hell just happened? The driver's wife is leaning over him out of the window in complete disbelief that he's not dead. Both them and the neighbor saw the timeline where he was smashed but he ran out of the other side fine. I saw both. $400 in x-rays later, the vet says he's perfectly fine. The driver honestly sat outside for like 20 to 30 minutes because they kept having me check to make sure he wasn't internally bleeding. And I'm like, no guys, he's fine. And the driver says, how? And honestly, I don't know. Case notes. You know what this makes me think of? It actually makes me think of editing, where you're slicing in different timelines, you're cutting out audio portions, you're moving frames around, it's like splicing things together. You can make it look like something happened for one second, one frame, and then you layer on another frame right after, maybe with a cross dissolve, and then you're in a different timeline. It's almost like someone was editing the file of the server in real time to save your dog. Now, why anyone would do that, I don't know. I mean, it's lovely that your dog is safe, but I wonder if, for some reason, he has an important role to play. Be sure to protect him. Case file number 377, written by Kaxri of Flame and Time. About two to three years ago, I remember stopping home from a drive so I could use a bathroom and grab some snacks. It wasn't a particularly long drive, maybe an hour or so, and I wasn't the driver. After stopping home and using the bathroom, I saw a candle in the gallery. It was a tiny candle. I felt the need to light it, so I did. It was hard since it was a small candle. Then, for some reason, I get the idea to spray this perfume on it. I don't know what I expected to happen or why I thought it was even a good idea, but I sprayed the perfume on the flame from the candle and saw an explosion and the candle shattering and felt fire on my skin and clothes surrounding me. I closed my eyes for a second and then the next thing I knew, I was right back to where I started, an unlit candle. This is one of the only experiences I've had like this. I've had a few similar ones, but I don't remember anything as vividly as this. Has anyone experienced anything similar? Case file number 378, written by Scott and Shadyside. Walmart, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Underwear, and a Glitch. I went to visit some friends who live about three hours away last weekend. I realized as I was last minute packing that I had no clean underwear. I arrived Friday night and my buddy and I ran to Walmart early Saturday morning. I got a three pack of undies, milk and cinnamon toast crunch. Narrator's notes. Nice. Went through the self checkout line, enjoyed the cereal, 
wore the underwear all weekend. End of story. That was until Tuesday when I grabbed my weekend bag to unpack and do laundry. I pulled out the used undies, but dug deeper and found brand new, still rolled up and taped, another pair, another pair, and another pair, and another pair. Well, that's impossible, because I only got one three-pack of undies. Where are these coming from? I was stumped, so I messaged my buddy and asked if he could find the packaging or receipt in his trash. He also remembers me getting a three-pack because we got a laugh when I flipped the pack and asked him if I'm still an extra large or if my virus weight put me in the higher size bracket. I'm still well into extra large territory. Then I thought, well, let me look at my account and see if I accidentally grabbed a bigger pack, although I'm sure I didn't. The price of cereal and milk is pretty predictable, so let's see what the total was. I look at my account and there's nothing from Walmart. I'm like, huh? So it's been well over a week now and still no back record of the underwear, cereal, or milk purchase. And I'm still baffled at the multiplying underwear, but I'm not complaining either. Bonus file, written by Anonymous. This is hollowed ground, says Eminem. Hello. So I stay in an apartment in a city center. I've been having some weird occurrences happen in my home. I've only lived here for just under two months. Tonight, I tried googling the history of where I live after my experiences. I didn't expect to come across anything, but I did. I found out that in 1934, an eight-year-old girl was murdered and hidden in a sack. This happened a few minutes walk down the street. Is it possible it could be this spirit in my apartment? I'll let you know some of the things that happened. 1. I dropped a hair clip on my bathroom floor, but couldn't find it anywhere after dropping it. I searched everywhere and even shook off the bathroom mat a few good times with no luck. Fast forward an hour or two and I go back into the bathroom. The hair clip is sat right on the bathroom mat like it had been there the whole time. 2. I was making dinner and using my microwave. It's the old style one where it's a dial and not digital, this at the time. Well, my thing in the microwave was done and it dinged. I went and sat in the living room next to the kitchen and ate for around 10 minutes. All of a sudden, the microwave was on. I went back into the kitchen, and it was turned on for two minutes. 3. The other night, I was in a separate room, and I heard this loud whistling. I thought it was my partner, so I went to ask if they were whistling a song. Turns out they weren't. 4. Last night, I went to bed and was laying down for around an hour. My partner was still in the office, and I heard music playing. I went through to ask them to turn it down, but then realized it was actually coming from the living room. The Alexa, which I haven't used in a good two weeks, was playing Guns A-Blazing by Eminem from the album Music To Be Murdered By. One of the lyrics being, just don't forget who you're messing with when stepping on hollowed ground. Safe to say I freaked myself out, and it's now 1am. I guess I'll try and sleep. Bonus file, written by No, Those Are Beans, when your customer is very weird, maybe even possessed. I am 22 female, a shipped shopper, and mostly work nights because that's when most orders are available, and I generally only accept orders in the zone closest to my home. One night, I decided I wanted to do one last order with the delivery window between 10pm and 11pm, but there weren't any available in my usual zone, so I figured I'd just pick up one on the other side of town to close out my day. During my shop, there were lots of things on this customer's list that were out of stock, and he had specified on his account that he'd like to be contacted in that situation. I was shopping for him for about 30 to 40 minutes and sent him probably 10 different texts about things that needed substitutes. I did not receive an answer until I was ready to check out, and had reached out to him one last time letting him know that's what was happening. He finally told me to just use my best judgement, to which I replied, no problem. Fast forward to having all his items bagged and in my car. I sent him a text letting him know I'm heading his way and that I'll be there in about 15 minutes, as I do for all my customers. I get to a street and it already is in the best part of town, which I didn't know before I accepted the order because I hadn't been over that way since I lived where I do now. And I'm thinking, okay, no problem, just make it a quick drop off and get back home. When I get to the house, the driveway is completely on the left side of the house and there's a porch only to the right corner that leads to the front door. So I can't see the door from the driveway, and nobody could see that I was in the driveway if they were at the door. 
I can see that there are multiple porch lights as well as lights around the house leading up to the door, but none of them are turned on. Now mind you, I have told this person I was on my way, gave him my estimated timeline, and pressed the button in the shipped app to notify him that I arrived. At this point, I'm feeling a knot in my stomach and my hair is standing up a little bit. Before I got out of my car, I sent a text to my boyfriend, whom I live with, telling him I was feeling really uncomfortable about the situation and the house was creeping me out, and if he didn't hear from me telling him I was on my way home, then something is wrong. This person ordered a lot of stuff and it was just me doing the delivery, so it took me three separate trips to the porch and back to my car to get everything out. I grabbed as much as I could for the first trip, went to the porch to get the groceries by the door, and went back to my car for the next load without knocking and making minimal noise. When I got to the porch to drop off my second load, I got up to the second step before looking up to make sure I could see where I was going in the dark, and realized the front door was now open and there was a man standing there staring at me. He also didn't turn any lights on in his house aside from what looked like a single light fixture three rooms away, so there was just a faint back glow behind him, and I could only see his silhouette, none of his face or even what he was wearing. Shocked, I just blurted out, Hello, how are you? And he stood there and said nothing, didn't reach for the bags, just looked at me. I dropped his bags off, went back to my car to get the last of the groceries, and didn't even make it up all the porch steps before dropping his groceries and turning around to run back to my car because the man was still just standing in the doorway looking at me. I didn't get tipped on that order, but I'd like to consider the fact that I made it home that night my tip. Needless to say, I haven't shopped in that area again since.